Well, everybody, we did it. We have another great day as the SEC takes another L or a loss as they fail to prove that Ethereum is a security yet again in the court case that they lose. And this is a story that everybody's talking about, and it's a big deal, but something just doesn't seem right that the SEC just gives up on a whim and moves into the L column without pretty much putting up any kind of fight. Here's what we got. So consensus comes out and they said, hey, good news, Ethereum survives the SEC. Consensus is the foundation for Ethereum. And this is what they say. They say, today we're happy to announce a major win for ETH developers, tech providers, industry participants. The enforcement division of the SEC has notified us that it is closing its investigation into Ethereum 2.0. This means the SEC will not bring charges alleging that sales of ETH are securities transactions. And they go into a little bit more detail and they talk about why this is and how our fight is going to continue. They seek a de declaration of the offering of a user interface MetaMask swaps and staking does not violate the securities laws. If you're like me, I actually swap and uh, do certain things within MetaMask. And they're saying that that could be considered legal no-no in the eyes of the SEC. And they're going to keep on fighting. And of course, as you scroll down, you'll get to Richard Dick Whitman, which says, you guys are scammers. How much do you supply do you own? <laughs> which is actually a pretty good question. But I regress. Talking about this, we can see that other people are you know, quite happy, and but they raised some good points. Paul Gruel, uh, who is the chief counsel for Coinbase, says, hey, this is great. It's very silly to begin with, but what about the ecosystem? What about the promotional statements? What about the efforts of others, which are all criteria for the Howey test to determine if it is a commodity or a security? And these questions remain unanswered, which I said, it's very fishy of the SEC just to go, yeah, we're not going to win. No big deal. We're going to move on. That's not their MO. They've got unlimited resources. They got unlimited money. They can keep fighting this. Something happened behind the scenes, I guarantee it. But Metal Lawman also makes a, a good point here. He says the SEC lawyers argued repeatedly and successfully in the Coinbase hearing that digital assets plus an ecosystem equals a security. But now they acknowledge that ETH, which is a digital asset, which has a very vast ecosystem, I think we can all agree there, is not a security. So what does that mean? It just means like, oh, no big deal. We just kind of messed up. Move along, citizen. Nothing to see here. Again, something's very odd. And what does this do for the market? Well, today's a pretty good day for all the coins. I mean, the last 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 0 0.1 in the last hour, 0.3%. Ethereum's up almost 3%. Then XRP, watch out, 1%. And of course, across the board, there's, there's some pretty good movement. But uh, it was much higher just a couple of hours ago, which means that this is not sustainable. Things are still on the green, but they are trending downwards. And why is that? It's because what Bitcoin does, the altcoins follow. And unfortunately for everybody here, there's more negative news as far as the ETF flows. Now, we're just going to talk about the negative so we can get to the positive. But this is what the reality is. The reality is, is that the total net flows for yesterday, June 18th, was almost 2,400 Bitcoin, leading the pack, which was Fidelity and Grayscale. No surprise there. But before that, it was actually ARK Investment. So, you know, go figure. These institutions, these people that are buying this up, they're actually taking profits and they're letting it go. And why is that? It's because they made a heck of a return. Remember, back in January when this was, was uh, started, and Bitcoin was around 40,000, somewhere around there. It reached all the way to 73,000. No traditional finance player is looking at that going, yeah, I think it can go to the moon. They're looking for a profit. But remember, there's a lot of big players in there. And a lot of big players like fund manager Booth Bay, 150 million. You got Millennium Management, $2 billion. But then you got the fund, ma the fund managers like Pine Ridge Advisors. And you know they put in 205 million. But the fund managers, the hedge fund, what they're going to do is they're going to sell. And this is a, a chart that just says or just talks about how uh, Bitcoin itself is being taken off the books by the hedge funds. And it was it's the lowest it's been since uh, roughly 2020, 2019. And why is that? It's noted that their positioning, hedge funds, is typically highly procyclical, meaning they have poor market timing and aggregate. When we begin to rally, they might be forced back into the market important dry powder for the upcoming upper legs. So just remember that even though these people are selling off and taking profits, they're waiting for it to really pull back to potentially get back in. Trust me, nobody's making this much money and going, you know what? I'm not going to get back in. This was the most successful ETF of all time. But 
you may have some doubts. You may have some thoughts. And this is why I turned to Bob Lucas. Bob Lucas just put out a, a, a video which was fantastic. And this one, he talks about, and if, if you're not familiar with Bob Lucas, really good trader. He's been, been in the space for quite some time. Big believer in the four-year cycle, just like myself. And he talks, he said, look, he goes, I've laid out a position for a potential left translated cycle, meaning that we could have a blow off top in 2024. But in this video, he's like, that's not going to happen. What I see more likely is we're going to see the same four-year patterns repeat. You're going to see a bear trap, or you're going to see at, at, at least some, some more accumulation and, and some sideways chop for a little bit. And you're going to see the individuals probably get back into the game. And then we'll have a blow off top in 2025. This is just what he sees. And I was, it was curious as far as what he said, and I could see it. And then one of the things that he also talked about was the selling off of Bitcoin. He says, look, you gotta remember, people make profits, they sell. I don't know why this is so hard for people to understand. I put it in my rules to remind people, but they're just like, Rob, you're a moron. No one's taking profits. Okay. So anyhow, a couple of days ago, we talked about this thing called Coin Days Destroyed. And uh, we look, we took a look at looking to Bitcoin.com. Ben's got a great site and uh, it really lays it out here as far as what's happening. What you're looking at right here is that when you have a specific number of Bitcoin, let's just say five, in this example, five Bitcoin. If it's held in the wall for 20 days and then they move it, or excuse me, if they have five Bitcoin, they hold in the wall for 20 days, that's 100 days. If they move it on the 101st day, that means it's 100 days destroyed. So essentially, the longer that you hold, the higher off uh, in the graphs that you actually go because you've held it for so long. And what you'll notice that over time, especially when we start to hit peaks, the OGs or the people that have uh, invested previously really start selling off. Now, I have to preface it with this, and this is a great example. It talks about how that even in like December of 2018 right here, you can see how the Bitcoin coin days destroyed is 363 million but it was just because Coinbase moved like 5% of their Bitcoin to another wallet and it kind of screwed up the whole, the whole count. So take this with a grain of salt, but over time, I'm telling you, the OGs and the people that have been investing for quite some time, they really start to sell. It means the last one, and look at this, that's enormous, 28 May, 2024. So what does this all mean? So when I was watching this video and then I, heard Bob talk about, well, you know, I took some profits. And I was like, what? So there's this website, bitcoin.live. I'll link in the description. As I come down here, I get to see his holdings. And I thought this was, this was a fantastic lesson. And it's the reason why I named this video, Just Have Patience, because this is all Bob did. He didn't go deep into meme coins and YOLO. He didn't do a bunch of DeFi farming. He didn't get in early with VC funding and seed rounds. All he did was he just bought a while ago and just held on to it. But it was the specific time frame that he bought. And you can see right here, again, you can check this out. It's pretty cool. He's got 42 Bitcoin. Bitcoin price right now is 65,002. That obviously will fluctuate. Average Bitcoin price, 4,022. His initial investment, 170. The value right now is 2.7 million. Here's the profit and loss, 15, 17%. 1,570%. Wouldn't that be great? But then you're telling yourself, but Rob, I can't get in with Bitcoin's 4,000. So that just invalidates what you're talking about. Not true. When I got in, and I'm not doing too bad, uh, I got in around 8,000, then 12,000, then 17,000. And I was really angry that I couldn't get in at $200 when I should have gotten in and I heard about it first. So it's the same thing going on with you. You say, oh, I can't get in at 4,000, and now I gotta get at 65,000. Look. The way things are going right now, I expect Bitcoin to go around 60,000 or below because we're going to be chopping sideways for a bit. So all that talk about buying things, maybe this is your opportunity. So I took a look at this and I go, what separates Bob? So look at this 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 date here. December 2018, he had a buy of 20, 25 Bitcoin. And I took a look, I'm thinking, that's a, that reminds me of something. There's these things called risk levels. And they're on Ben's website. And if you watch, there's a video in the description where I talk about when I'm going to sell 80% of my of my Bitcoin and crypto. And I talk a lot about these risk levels. There's also another video I did where I talked about dynamic DCAing. So I linked those in the description. You can check those out. What I want you to show you is that in December 2018, these risk levels, 0 0.0081 almost never happens. But you'll see prices at like $2. <laughs> $3. And of course, 
they fluctuate as time goes on because you know risk levels and price goes up but in uh, 2015 point geez 200 under 200 bucks amazing but you don't see it happen again until you flick on this light 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 remember that date december 2018 if we take a look over here december 2018 was 0 0.1 zero that's a good time to be in so you're thinking to yourself well that's great so all i got to do is just buy at these 0 0.1 levels no that's not it if you actually scroll down on this chart you can see that bob bought on september 2019th and march 2020 what do those look like let's take september 2019 real quick i'm gonna turn all these on september 2019 you're looking at a risk level of 0 0.5 that's in the middle when the price was $10,000. And just for reference, just so you know, right now we're at 0 0.595. And then of course, there's some other numbers here that we can take a look at. Uh, let's take December 2020, excuse me, March 2020. So if we pull that up for March 2020, we can see that the risk level is 0 0.448. So Bob didn't time it perfectly as far as risk levels go, but he accumulated pretty well. But there was something also interesting. See these two parts right here, sell and sell? Let's take a look at December 2020, what the risk levels were. So December 2020, your, left, your risk level was 0 0.595. That's the exact same risk level we're at right now. So you're telling me that the time that Bob Lucas, who did a really great job, was actually selling at the same risk levels, people can actually use that to accumulate crazy. Now let's also take a look at the last buy one. I'm just curious. February 2022, where does that go to? So we come over here. February 2022, risk level 0 0.37. Obviously a little bit better. But the whole point is this. As he did this, he sold off, which I know a lot of people don't like to hear, to you know the S word, sell. But at some point, you might want to do that. He didn't sell everything. He sold 15 Bitcoin. And guess what? For all the money that he's put in, the total cost of what he's actually put in, he's actually negative 1735, meaning he is in the positive and the value is actually 2.7 million. So he has no risk. Wouldn't that be great? And last thing I'll just say about this is that I know people get sick of me saying this, but when I when I talk about profits, it's not just because I want to waste my breath. It's just to remind you that at some point you might want to take profits. Everybody's different. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. Obviously, I'm definitely not your dad. So you do whatever you want to do. But at some point, you might want to start to think about that. And that could be altcoin. And yes, that could be Bitcoin moving forward. And if you're looking for more of the uh, risk levels, uh, Ben's website has a link in the description. You can check that out. That's what I'm basing a big chunk of what I'm doing as far as selling. And lastly, don't be this guy because Every time we get into this situation, the sentiment really sours and people say to themselves, oh, this is never going to go up. This is awful. And every time it turns around, everybody's like, damn it, maybe I should have bought. Again, up to you. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. Again, I appreciate you stopping by. I do, and I'll see you on the next one.